Hi, my name is Jalian and this is my van Big Red. It's a 1979 B200 Dodge van. The whole idea behind buying it was just to have a bedroom because I didn't have a place to live. It's been a journey of fixing it because it was in pretty bad shape. So it's all cedar interior. I wanted it to be cedar because it smells good and it's like mold proof and it's it absorbs a lot of moisture so I didn't have to worry about it, it being humid because in a lot of vans it's super humid well for good reason we're in Vancouver it's raining right now I put my kitchen here because it might it might take away some of the door but at the same time I don't need any more than this so I just kind of have my toiletries and bags and stuff like that in here and then I get these like three really big drawers where I can have like my um, cups and whatever I don't know whatever you want so I have like three drawers they're pretty tight which is nice um, so yeah I have three drawers which is pretty great I built them extra tight so that they wouldn't slide out so I have this jug right here so it's a it's a 23 liter jug and it has a pipe that connects to this little thing here and then in the back <laughs> I usually put a pipe that goes down into like outside but I didn't do that this time because I wanted to you know not do that so I have this little jug here so it's super simple I just didn't want to make it complicated so I have this little jug it might change I don't know I just use what I had on hand so I use my butane stove and uh, depending on the weather usually I cook outside so I take out my table and I go outside or if I really need to I made I made this table. <laughs> so you just do what you gotta do you know cut a piece of cedar and then it just kind of leans on here that's pretty much all you need and it's pretty sturdy so it's my extension to my kitchen. Fire away. Then you open your window. And that's pretty much it. That's how I cook. In my bench, this is the battery bank. This is where my batteries live. I do have a, a solar panel that's uh, 100 watts and it's portable. So I get to like put it on my roof or I get to put it like outside so that you can recharge your batteries. I have my inverter, which is, it was $10 at a garage sale, you know? This is where my toilet lives and it's just like a chemical toilet and I'm fine with that. I also have the option of lifting it up and just go if I want to. I haven't done that yet. This is actually uh, for my drawer. So this is what I usually do and then I put a cushion on top. So then you can just sit like this. And then you can tend the fire because it's a lot easier if you just sit here. So I have two seating areas which is pretty dope. So the goal for the whiskey barrel um, was to use it for a shower. So this supposed to stay up here and then I was gonna put like a little shower head up here and then shower because in the summer I like to rinse myself off before going to bed um, so it was supposed to be used for that but um, unfortunately <laughs> I tried to stain it and it just cracked open so I have to revisit what I want to do with this area but um, I might try it again we'll see but that was the goal for that. This is a cubic mini. I chose a wood stove because I didn't know about a diesel heater. <laughs> I mean, no, I like the wood stove because I like to stay in the woods for a long period of time and it's easier to heat your place up with a wood stove and plus you can use it to um, boil water and cook some food. And I think that it goes with the vibe of my wood cabin, I find. Um, so yeah, it's it works really well. It gets extremely hot. Um, and I recommend it to everybody, except for nighttime. Nighttime is not the time you want a wood stove. I promise you, because you have to stoke it every two to three hours, which means you do not sleep. But nighttime, I definitely recommend like a diesel heater because then you can just turn it on 
and it just goes and it stops so but yeah this is a great little thing to have I would not switch it for anything else um, but yeah so I I used tile <laughs> and silicone so I siliconed all the tile um, so that when the van moves it's not you know it doesn't break um, and then underneath I used um, the high temperature silicone um, with these tiles and yeah it just helps to not make everything melt <laughs> so all of my wood goes underneath there um, little pieces little tiny pieces for my wood stove um, and it dries out the wood too because it's right underneath so it keeps it warm this is how i light things <laughs> it's it it looks silly but um i didn't put any lighting in here because again i didn't know what i needed so um this is what i use for light and it works pretty well actually it's kind of strange but it reflects off of the ceiling so wherever i am i just put the lights like going upwards and it works <laughs> So it's really cozy, it's like a pillow. Um, inside here there's another little cubby and that's my secret spot. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Don't tell anyone I told you that's where I keep my secret things. Um. <laughs> and then up here um, I usually have two bins which are like this. And this is where I keep other things but it's a small little cubby I know this is all a wall so in case of emergency I did um, make some doors so, so that you can go outside if you need to like if you need to bust open that window and like get out I decided to put a wall back here because it is so cold to sleep near back doors like it was so cold and I was just so I was just tired of it so I built this insulated wall and now it's super cozy and it's like a cocoon of cedar when I bought this van I needed a place to live and I've never built anything in my life so the the plan was just to live in it because it was already done it had already been built uh, so I didn't know I was getting into a van build until I was getting into a van build. There was a crack in the window and, and there was a crack in the roof and I didn't know because I bought the van in the summer um, and when rain season started it was raining inside like a lot like way too much and my bed was behind the, the doors um, and there was just water everywhere and I was thinking to myself do I just sell the van and just you know get rid of it see what I can get for it or do I jump into something new and gut the thing like gut it and just start over and I'm not one to back away from a challenge so I just decided to be like whatever let's just do it so I just gutted the whole thing not knowing what I was doing at all had no clue what I was gonna do and I just it just everything fall like fell into place this is my cabin on wheels so I never have to pay for an Airbnb you know like I just if I want to go somewhere I don't have to plan it out that much I just pack my van and I leave so for me the benefit is I'll never be homeless because I have my van um, so if ever anything happens to me rent wise, I will always have a place to live no matter what something to fall back on um, And also well, I get to have a hotel so I get to go to Tofino I get to go to the States someday not right now <laughs> But I you, you get to travel Canada and wherever you want so yeah I save a lot of money on hotels because I get to just park my home wherever I go the challenges I mean it is an old van so it does break down so that was a big one um, it broke down a lot so I had to fix it a lot um, some of the criticisms that I've had over having this van and keep like I keep fixing it the reality is like I didn't have any money to buy a new van so I bought a van at the time that I could afford and there's nothing wrong with fixing a van and putting, you know, thousands of dollars in an older van to fix it. 
because sometimes that's all you can do at the time is fix it as you go. This van, I bought it for $4,700. So $4,700 is what I bought it. Um, throughout the years, uh, I mean, I've, I've fixed almost everything on it. Uh, I have a new carburetor, a new gas tank, a new gas gauge, a timing chain, fuel pump, water pump, new battery, a new coil, uh, like spark plugs. You know, I've, I've fixed the suspension in the back, now I'm fixing the suspension in the front. Uh, so it's basically like a new van. Um, so I've spent, <laughs> I don't know if I should say, <laughs> I've put around in between 15 to 20 thousand dollars in it living in a, in your van when it rains i think that's another challenge um, because you want to when it rains you want to stay at home but then you're always in your van and it's like sometimes it gets a little small so that's one of the challenges um being a woman living in a van um the only challenge is when it's that time of the month and you don't want to move your van because you just want to stay like you know cozy and you're hurting and you don't want to move so that's like one of my challenges um was definitely that time of the month is definitely a challenge living in a van because uh you want to have access to a shower you want to be able to go to the bathroom and not think about it so i think those are the biggest ones for me as far as living in a van um, that are a bit more challenging I recommend it to everyone. You become a better person living in a van, I find, because you let go of your things and you let go of so much stuff. So anyone can do it. It just depends on what kind of mindset you come into it. And it is frustrating and it's tiring and it's such a mental challenge, but it's good for you because it challenges you to like be more creative I learned that I don't need that much stuff to live. <laughs> I come from Ottawa and I'm a city girl. I'm, I was definitely not a country person or camping, like definitely not. I've learned that I don't need, I don't need too much. And I can, I, I've just, I've learned that I can be way more creative than I expected. Uh, what else have I learned? I've learned that being slightly dirty is not the end of the world. <laughs> It's true, like, you know, just put your feet in dirt and it's fine because you can rinse it off. Like, just being slightly a little bit dirty is not the end of the world. Recently, I feel you only have one chance to be you in this one life. So just do what you want to do and try not to be afraid doing it. And if you are afraid, just do it pretty much like you have you have nothing to lose ever no matter what even if it's your house even if it's your it's just things so I figure I just want to have the best experience that I can have so yeah just just do it <laughs> you you just have one life to live so just have fun with it and let go of what your mind is telling you I think that's what I'm learning right now yeah just let go of what your brain's trying to sabotage you and just have fun. My Instagram is Big Red Van Life 1979. Uh, I'm also building out a houseboat with my partner, and our Instagram is uh, at boat and bus. So it's boat with an N bus. Um, and I also have a YouTube channel and it's for the, our, our boat conversion. So it's a uh, boat and bus, tiny living conversions. So we're building out something else. If it's not a van, it's a boat. And if it's not a boat, it's a bus. So yeah, I'm doing all the different things. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. Also, if you wanna watch more Alternative Dwellings, we've got a playlist popping up right here and we release new episodes every single Sunday. So consider subscribing.